Hi everyone, this is going to be my health update. I was going to write down things, but I think I'm just going to wing it. <laughs> so, here it goes. <laughs> okay, so I think where we left off on my health update was my gallbladder surgery. And my gallbladder surgery went well. Um, they put me to sleep and it wasn't scary. I think a lot of people are scared of that part. I wasn't scared. Like, this is the first surgery I had where I was put to sleep. I've had a surgery before. I had a C-section, and my son is 15 now. He just turned 15 in December. So, I don't, I was like 22 when I had him. So, I recovered very quickly. I lost the weight very quickly. I was very young and active, so, um, <laughs> like, yeah, I don't, but you probably don't want to hear about my C-section because that's been ages ago. We're going to try to stay, stay here, focused here. Okay. Um, so the gallbladder surgery. Okay. Um, it went well, like I said. Um, I was put to sleep. Um, when I woke up, I wasn't in, I have a very high threshold for pain. So, um, my experience could be different from other people's experience because of that. Um, I was in pain for the first few days, and I did take the med the pain medication the first few days. Like the first day, I took it pretty like within the time that you're allowed to take the pain medication. But really, I don't like to take pain medication. When we go back to that C-section, they had given me like a hide it one of those like really how can I explain like they gave me a they gave me Motrin but they also gave me like another pain medicine. I can't remember the name of it. This time um they gave me like a pain medication and like this the last gallbladder attack that I had it lasted like hours so those and those are painful like <laughs> I have a high threshold for pain but like the last two gallbladder attacks that I had had, I, w I cried because it was like nine hours of pain. And it was like labor, it felt like labor pain to me. Because yes, I had a C-section, but I went through like all the labor pain of before they gave me the C-section. So I had like dilated six centimeters I think or maybe even more than that I can't remember but then they decided to do the c-section and they did that because my son's heartbeat went down anyways I digress from that that one okay so the gallbladder surgery so um I was on a low-fat diet and well like I said the last two attacks the last one I went to the ER because I needed medic I needed like a pain medicine because I was not I wasn't going I wasn't sleeping from that because it was hurting so much so I was like that I just give up I gave up like the other ones I tried to you know take the pain like one was five hours I think that last one was like nine hours it was ridiculous so I was like um I'm just I can't do this like. <laughs> So, anyways, I finally had the surgery, and as I said, um, now, I wasn't, like, before I had the surgery, I was eating low fat. Like, I would, for example, I was eating, um, for, din for breakfast, I would eat, like, a bowl of cereal, because cereal is not fattening, and I would always eat, like, low fat and milk, because I could, eggs are, like, not good for you, I think. I did have grits sometimes. Yeah. So I would like get cereal or grits. Lunch. I can't remember what I would have for lunch. I know I had like light mayo. And I think I would have like a turkey sandwich sometimes. But I couldn't go over like 15 fat calories per meal. So yeah. Dinner. It was a lot of um, just chicken breast. And I would bake it in the oven. And like sometimes I would, and then you can have like vegetables because they're, you know, they don't have fat. 
So I lost a lot of weight during that. I think the lowest I was was 113. But there's a reason why I got that low also. So, um, and let me think if that's everything dealing with the gallbladder. Well, now I'm back on my, um, I can eat fats again. I haven't, I don't, I haven't ate anything that is like disagree with me or whatever. Um, I don't have the gallbladder anymore, so it can't give me a gallbladder attack. If you have any questions like about that I'm leaving any if I leave anything out then just ask me a question and I don't mind answering you so anyways when they when they find out that you need to have your gallbladder out it's usually by them doing an ultrasound of your um, stomach so well not really your stomach yep yeah, but your upper abdomen. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so when they did this ultrasound on my upper abdomen and they they saw that I had sludge in my gallbladder. I didn't have gallstones. I had sludge in my gallbladder. So they told me, you're going to have to have gallbladder surgery. But they also saw something on my liver. So when they saw this, they said that it did not look, it looked benign, which is non-cancerous. Um, but they, the doctor wanted me to get, because when I got that, I was at the ER doctor. So he wanted me to, you know, like, I had to get a surgeon and that is who kind of like, like my doctor had to refer me to a surgeon and then this surgeon kind of like became my doctor, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Okay, well, not he didn't really become my doctor, but he just kind of like started referring me here and there and everywhere because of, you know. Okay, they had found something on my liver. They called it a nodule or cyst. My doctor called it a cyst. Someone called it a nodule. I have But the most important thing is this is benign. So it's non-cancerous. So that's excellent. So, when they saw this during that ultrasound of my gallbladder, doctors love to have a second opinion. So, they sent me to have an MRI. So, I went in and I had an MRI. And when it, you have an MRI, they can do it. There's some kind of medicine that they can put in you. And I don't know the name of it now. But they put an IV in you. And sometimes you can have your MRI without this medicine, and sometimes you can have it with this medicine. So they gave it to me with this medicine, and I can't remember the name of the medicine. I'm so sorry. Um, but if you have an MRI before, you know what I'm talking about. And pretty, if you haven't, and then they just—it's pretty much they give you an IV so that this medicine can like travel through you know, your organs, and they can see if it's flowing the right way or something. That's what I took from this. I'm no doctor. <laughs> so, you know, and if you ever have any kind of problems like this, do not go to your doctor so that they can diagnose you properly and everything. I'm just telling my story. Please do not go off of, you know, my story and think that it you have this or because I do that <laughs> that's the, I do that like I go on Google and I scare myself half to death so I don't want anyone else to do that so anyways they gave me the MRI and they did the IV with the medicine and all that stuff so as they said in the ultrasound and the ultrasound is kind of like the same ultrasound that you have when you're having a baby where they you know they go on your stump they go on your stomach like you're up here I'm trying to stand up like here you know with the like a wand it doesn't hurt or anything well it did hurt me but that's because they were putting pressure on my gallbladder and it was it hurt so <laughs> it was uncomfortable anyways I had the MRI so then when I had the MRI they saw the, they saw that, you know, and my liver, that's what they were looking at. But then they noticed that I had 
cystic cyst on my breast, which I've known this ahead of time. Like a few years ago, my doctor, she had did, you know, when you go in and a woman has her checkup, they check your breast for lumps. And she checked mine and she said, when, well, a long time ago, long time ago, it was after I had my son, they told me that I had, one of my doctors told me I had cystic breasts. So then I had had like a few years later, you know, I had like another um, checkup. And then she told me that I had cysts on my breasts. And she just wanted me to get an ultrasound and a mammogram just to rule out breast cancer and things like that. So I had already knew that I had cystic breasts. So the MRI saw that also. So then my surgeon, he recommended me to get another, another breast ultrasound and another, no, he didn't recommend the, he didn't recommend the mammogram. That happened later. Okay, so they did that and then like I had knew all of this during my <laughs> gallbladder surgery. So many issues. And that's, and you will find out that there's more. Okay. So, he got the ultrasound results back. And then he told me that he wanted me to have a, he said that everything looked benign to him. That he just wanted to be certain. So, he did a breast biopsy. And that hurts. They do numb you, but you're not asleep. Um... And they stick a needle. And I saw, like, I didn't see them. It was this. I, did, I was looking like this. But I could see, like, they do it by ultrasound. So, I could see the needle going into my breast. It was, and it did not feel good. Like, I didn't cry or anything. I, like I said, I have a high threshold for pain. But it was uncomfortable. Like, a lot of uncomfortable things have been happening. So that came out benign also, thank God. So after that, I had another ultrasound, I think. He wanted me to get another ultrasound. And this time, I think the person who did the ultrasound, they requested that I do another mammogram. So I had another ultrasound and mammogram. And none of that, like, they match. <laughs> they you know, and mash you, like if you've ever had it. So I'm 38, and I don't think I'm supposed to get a mammogram until I'm 45. Well, my doctor has told me I don't have to have another mammogram until I am 45, I believe it is. But, yeah, it is not. I only had to have it on the one, like, this breast. So, thank God everything is benign and non-cancerous. I just have cystic breasts, and evidently... My assist uh, on my liver also. <laughs> so, because prior to this, prior like to this gob, like after I had the gallbladder surgery, well before I had the gallbladder surgery, I went to see what is that called? Oh my God, I can't think of the name. The doctor that does the endoscopy and the colonoscopy. I think y'all know what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh. This is why I should have wrote notes down. Okay. The doctor who does the endoscopy and the colonoscopy, if you don't know what those are, the, colon the endoscopy is where they take, um, a camera and it goes down into like your stomach I think and I think they can look at they look at like your um windpipe or whatever this was called and your stomach like to check for ulcers and some this is how you can check for stomach cancer and also you know the oh my gosh I can't think of any of the names of anything right now your windpipe. <laughs> God, this is, I am horrible at 
this. Okay. So, I had that, and everything was good, like, with my stomach. I don't have ulcers or stomach cancer or anything going on with my, like, everything was clear. Then I had a colonoscopy also, and that is how I think I lost all that weight. I bet also, like, I am not overweight to begin with, um... And I've always been really bonesy, <laughs> I guess she could, like I've always been small, always. So, also like, when I had my son, after I, as soon as I had him, like two weeks later, I was back down to my, like, normal weight, pretty much. So, yeah, I've always been like, I've never had a problem with weight, I guess you could say. So... Now, I'm like, I've gained 20 pounds since then, actually. That was, and it was really quickly that I gained the weight. I think it's because I added fat back into my diet. And I added it, like, at first, I was going slowly at it. Then I just went, like, full-on fat. Like, I think I had a meal from Wendy's or McDonald's or something. Yeah, I just said, well, here we go. Let's just see what, how, what this gallbladder can take. Anyway, well, it's not there anymore. So, anyways, I had a colonoscopy. And that's the first time I ever had a colonoscopy before. And that is, like, the worst thing. Like, I can, the green Gatorade, whatever, because you can only have either yellow or green Gatorade, I think it was. They don't want you to have red I know it was definitely red because they don't are I think you can have clear. I think you have yellow, clear, or the green one. But I know that they said no red because they don't want there's like a dye in it that can that they don't want like they don't want that dye. Because I think it would be harder to see anything in there. So I was doing good with that. And see, because it's, I don't, it's not like they say where you have to, like, camp out in the bathroom or anything like that. But, it does, like, you do have to go to the bathroom regularly. But that part didn't really bother me. The part that really, like, made me start getting nauseous was, like, I had done, like, I think I had done, like, the Gatorade... And then there was the, it was this last step. It was like a glass bottle. And you cannot mix anything with that. You have to like drink that straight. And that is the one that was like really making me gag kind of. And also the Gatorade. I can never drink like that green. I think it was like a tropical kind of Gatorade. I can never drink that again. Because it made me, like when I had come home, I was going to try to have like that as a Gatorade. <laughs> And it made me nauseous, so I was like, uh-uh, I can't do it. Anyways, if you guys have any questions about any of this stuff that I ramble on about, and maybe, like, when I'm answering questions in the comments, I can really come up with, like, the names of medications and, you know, procedures and all that kind of stuff. Well, anyways, what happened with my colonoscopy was... They had found two polyps. So the doctor told my husband they were small, I think, really small. So they tested them. And when they test polyps, they can just be like benign. I think they can be precancerous. And they kind of give you papers on, you know, what you need to do if they are this or that or the other. Are they going to be cancerous, which means you have colon cancer? So, mine were precancerous, which means in five years, I have to go back and have another colonoscopy. If it wasn't, I could wait till I was 50, probably. I think that's the 50. Also, your children, they have, instead of being 50 when they have their first colonoscopy, they should go when they're 40. So... But, um, just because it says precancerous, it doesn't mean that you're going to get colon cancer. So, if you ever, that ever happens to you, it doesn't mean that you're going to get colon cancer. 
you just have to like you know screen be screened more often like some people I think it's every few months some people I think it's every year maybe so I think I think it's like every three years or five years I think that's the norm so he told me in five years so in five years when I am like 42 or 43 I have to go back and have another colonoscopy which is so much fun yay me and also in another year my doctor she wants me oh yes also I had another MRI because they wanted to look at my liver again and that came back fine my doctor she said that she just want, it's kind of something that they like to look at so I need to go back for that in another year um so so when I'm like 38 like this year I'll probably get back 38-39 because it's just kind of something that they look at until it's, they don't see anything happening like it's growing I think you can have surgery if it bothers you or something like that or if it grows or whatever you can have surgery so they just they just kind of like look at it you know like they did with me like they saw it during the gallbladder so I had an MRI and then six months later I think or a few months later I had another MRI and then a year later I have another MRI so it's kind of something they just look at and then they're kind of like oh it's not doing we can we don't need to look at this anymore that's how they told me exactly <laughs> so I think that is like all of my health updates and I'm sorry to keep you guys for 21 minutes wow um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I don't mind sharing because I just did. <laughs> Sorry that I don't know like the correct procedures or the medications. I should have wrote notes down. If you want me to do another one of these and like better be prepared, then please you can put that in the comment below too. But I think. I'm just going to leave it like this. Um, so, if you have any questions, if you really need to know, like, if you're getting ready to go for an MRI or ultrasound or anything and you're nervous about something, just please ask me a question. I don't mind answering you. I don't really think there's anything really personal. And my phone is ringing, so I need to go. Bye!